Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about a few multiple choice questions in head and neck anatomy. The text books and the atlas book and also a book written by me about 1870 multiple choice questions. The link, I will put all the links in the description bar of my video. If you have any chance, please uh, collect or read those text atlas and uh, multiple choice question book. Let's start our question. Question number 51. A, 50, a 22 year old soldier received a sharpener injury to the posterior triangle of the neck with possible damage to the spinal roots of the accessory nerve which of the following two muscles might be paralyzed due to that injury sternocleidomastoid and trapezius splenius capitis and levator scapulae scalene posterior and the rhomboid major omohyoid and sternohyoid what is the answer this sternocleidomastoid and trapezius inhabited by the spinal roots of the accessory nerve splenius capitis inhabited by the cervical nerve like levator scapulae getting innervation from c3 c4 may also get innervation from dorsal scapular nerve scalene posterior again inhabited by cervical nerve the rhomboid major inhabited by the dorsal scapular nerve Umohyoid sternohyoid innervated by the ansa cervicalis. So our answer is sternocleidomastoid and trapezius innervated by the spinal roots of the accessory nerve. Okay, let's go to the next slide. A 34 year old woman had developed difficulty in swallowing due to due to fishbone infection, maybe one or multiple in her throat for last three days an ENT doctor or otolaryngologist identified the impacted fishbone penetrating the posterior wall of the laryngopharynx with an acute rectopharyngeal space inflammation the rectopharyngeal space is located between which of the following structure the superficial and deep layer of the investing cervical fascia skin and the sternocleidomastoid muscle platysma and the investing there of deep cervical fascia buccopharyngeal fascia and prevertebral fascia answer should be buccopharyngeal fascia and prevertebral fascia this is the answer okay now here a 43 year old woman with a huge goiter goiter means enlargement of the thyroid gland with visible subcutaneous veins come to the hospital came to the hospital for an elective thyroidectomy where does the inferior thyroid vein open it opens into the left brachiocephalic vein in most cases rarely in the right brachiocephalic vein not in the internal jugular vein. Internal jugular vein receives the middle thyroid vein, also the superior thyroid vein. External jugular vein does not receive the, the thyroid veins. A zygous vein is not related to the thyroid vein. A 48 year old woman had a thyroid surgery to remove her papillary thyroid carcinoma a few days later she developed hoarseness of voice which of the following structure was damaged during the surgical procedure and caused this problem so hoarseness of voice okay which structure has been damaged certainly a nerve what nerve not glossopharyngeal okay it should be the recurrent laryngeal nerve okay not these blood vessels this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all the intrinsic muscles in the larynx except ex cricothyroid which is innervated by the external laryngeal nerve 
So all intrinsics except hypothyroid innervated by recurrent laryngeal nerve. That nerve may be damaged during surgery, specifically in papillary thyroid carcinoma if it is very large. In that condition, we get coarseness of voice because the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are paralyzed. A medical student was trying to recollect the information from an embryology lecture class on the development of the head and neck. The professor mentioned the name of a muscle derived from the first and second pharyngeal arches, innervated by the mandibular nerve and the facial nerve. The muscle with dual innervation is what? Digestic, mylohyoid, genohyoid, sternohyoid, sternothyroid. So, dual innervation, digestic, anterior belly by the mylohyoid nerve, that is actually a derivative of the mandibular nerve, and posterior belly by the facial nerve. A flying object penetrated the neck of a 23 year old man with possible damage to one of his phrenic nerves. The phrenic nerve passes down the neck over which of the following muscles? Scalene posterior, scalene medias, or middle scalene, scalene anterior, sternocleidomastoid, trapezius. Answer should be what? The scalene anterior. A is the answer. Okay. Then a group of medical students had hard time to dissect the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. What is the exact location of the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion? In the investing layer of this cervical fascia, in the pretracheal fascia, over the platysma muscle, posterior to the carotid sheath, embedded in the prevertebral fascia. What is that? Sir? Answer is D. Posterior to the carotid sheath embedded in the prevertebral fascia, so it is deeply located, and the dissector should take time to go behind the carotid sheath in the upper part, and the dissector will find out the, the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. Very large, but it is embedded in the prevertebral fascia. It is located behind the carotid sheath. Okay. After a total thyroidectomy operation on the third post operative day, a 57 year old woman developed hypocalcemia, muscle spasm, high serum levels of phosphorus, and low levels of vitamin D. Which of the following structure had been removed along with the thyroid gland? Thymus, okay, that may be absent almost atrophic in a 57 year old woman. Parathyroid gland, carotid body, no, because carotid body is present inside the bifurcation of common carotid artery, okay, so that is not the case. Parotid gland. It is not related to the thyroidectomy, so answer should be pathoid gland. Ideally, surgeon at least try to keep one or at least half pathyroid gland. He like to take all the thyroid if it is essential. For some reason, if it is not done, then we get this feature: low levels of vitamin D and high level of serum phosphorus. Number 59, all of the following muscles are innervated by the ansa cervicalis with, with one exception. The exception is what? Sternohyoid, homohyoid, sternothyroid, mylohyoid. All of them innervated by the ansa cervicalis except mylohyoid by the nerve to the mylohyoid that is actually derived from the mandibular nerve or the V3. A journalist cleansed his teeth to express 
horrific experience of a disaster and a large thin sheet of subcutaneous neck muscle was visibly tensed. What is the nerve supply of that muscle extending between the supraclavicular and infraclavicular region? Okay, vagus nerve, facial nerve, recurrent laryngeal nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, accessory nerve. What is the nerve? He is showing the muscle of facial expression that is the platysma muscle innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve. Okay, now identification. Identify the indicated red area. Which is this? This area. Is it lesser wing of the spinoid, greater wing of the spinoid, pictus part of temporal bone, creeping from plate of ethmoid bone? Answer should be lesser wing of spinoid bone. Greater wing should be here. Okay. Pictus part of temporal bone is here. Cribriform plate of ethmoid bone is here. So, answer should be the lesser wing of the spinoid bone. Lesser wing of the spinoid bone. Okay. Here, identify the indicated red structure. Very important. Bregma. Bregma indicates the infantile anterior frontal area junction between the frontal suture and the sagittal suture here in the vertex. Lambda again here, posterior part, occipital bone, parietal bone at the point here. There is a lambda that is the lambda suture. Inion, inion is the external occipital protuberance. Terion is this area that is our answer multiple bone come together and bones are thinned out and and there is an anterior division of the middle meningeal artery that may be ruptured any type of severe trauma here this is the terion underneath will get the this is the area terion and underneath will get the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery under the bone that may be damaged in case of epidural hemorrhage. Nation is here, nation. Okay. Now, which structure? Okay. Now, which, which structure passes through the indicated foramen? What is this foramen? Carotid canal. What should be the content? Mandibular nerve, maxillary nerve, vertebral artery, external jugular vein okay here identify the indicated red bone here that is forming part of the orbit okay what is that is it lesser wing of the spinoid bone getter wing of the spinoid bone ethmoid bone zygomatic bone lacrimal bone answer should be what this is the greater wing of the spinoid bone greater wing of the spinoid bone this is the bone this is the bone greater wing of the spinoid bone okay here identify the suture indicated by red arrow coronal suture squamous suture Lambdoid suture is the indicated structure. Lambdoid suture. Sagittal suture should be here, not shown here. Spinoethmoidal, spinopatal suture. Spinopatal suture is here. Okay, so where my arrow is pointing? Arrow is pointing towards the lambdoid suture. This is that. Okay, so that's all about the multiple choice question. I have added the link of the textbook and my multiple choice question book for your review and collection. If you like, you can collect and read that. So by this time, please share the information with your friends and please support.